Hi guys, Brian the Scary Lion back with another video and I am joined once again by Pterodactyl Tom. Well, TLC happened last night. I, uh, in my opinion, very, very, very good pay-per-view. It was not the best. I thought, I thought it was probably one of the best of the year. It was really good in my opinion. But I, uh, we're changing things up a little bit on here's what happened. This time, as well as letting you guys know what happened, we're going to be personally rating each match. There's not really going to be any surprises for me, is there? But anyway, all that being said, let's get into it. The first match that we had was on the kickoff show, and this was Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. That was a very good match. Uh, it really didn't really disappoint me, so always put on a great show. It shouldn't have been relegated to the pre-show. There's so many matches on that card that could have been relegated to the pre-show. Uh, we'll talk about which match we feel should have been there. But, uh, like, ex two excellent performers. Put on a really good show. Really? A, c a couple of times it looked like Cedric Alexander could have actually took the win away from Buddy Murphy. But Buddy Murphy prevailed and yeah. walked away with a victory. I am so happy he did. So my match rating for this one, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. I thought it was a really entertaining match, uh, so much in it, and I, I loved it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a 3.5. Like, they, they could have done better with it like, if it was on the actual show. Mm -hmm. This would have been a brilliant ladder match. It's 2 or 5 wide, but it's the cruiserweight, so the flippy, mm. the, the flippy stuff and that lot. Right? Next match on the card was the... Ladder match slash guitar on a pole match that they ended up changing the rules for. It was Elias versus Bobby Lashley. And it was originally set up to be the first person to grab the guitar could use it. Yep, but luckily, really luckily they wised up and went the first person to grab it actually takes the victory. Again, a pretty decent match between the two. Like, I know you don't like Bobby Lashley yeah. and... I will admit the character for it, the amount of times he showed his arse was a bit much. But the match itself was really good. No. With this, Elias did walk away with a fucking victory. Yes, I'm happy Fucking with that. brilliant. But they still managed to do what they wanted to do. They managed to let Elias walk away with a victory, but also push this massive heel Bobby Lashley by having Bobby Lashley destroy Elias after the match. No. I felt like that was a really good way to go. It was. I'm going to give this one a 3.5. I don't feel it was as entertaining as the first match, uh, but it did really put on a good show. Actually, I'm changing it to a 3 because of the stuff with Bobby Lashley showing his arse and all that. I'm going to get us and just standard to 2 out of 5. It was. It just felt like. It felt like a raw match. Now we move on to the main show and the match that I feel should have been on the pre show. Yes, um, uh, This was the mix match challenge uh, final. Up to a certain point, the match was really good. I didn't like it whatsoever. You didn't. You might not have liked it whatsoever, but I thought the action in the ring and everything, uh, it just felt really good. And we even had that funny moment with the sings coming in and dancing, and then our truth taking them out. I felt like that was a funny moment, and it felt really nice. Wrestling, it just seems to be getting mass stupid these days, and. I thought we pro progressed from this, but no. The Fabulous Truth walked away with a victory on this, uh, but it was sloppy as hell for the finish. At first we had Alicia Fox hitting our truth, which... Disqualification. Yeah. Then we had Jinder Mahal pulling uh, Carmella. Disqualification again. Yeah. And Brian. the roll-up kind of felt a bit iffy. Aye, but look at what's happened to the mixed match challenge. Yeah, the, the mix match challenge and... fell apart, it fell apart. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5, <clears throat> literally because I don't feel like it was the worst card match on the card. We'll get to that. That match is getting a 1 star rating for me. But now we move on to the SmackDown Tag Team Championship triple threat match. Yeah, this, this match really felt really, really good. Yeah. But I think a lot of people will actually argue that the ranked team won it. Which I don't think you should do. Literally for the sheer action and just the way that they every competitor actually connected with each other to put on a great show here. No. I 
feel like you should look at that rather than going, oh, the bar won it, they shouldn't have done, because the bar are an incredible team. No. Uh, this match for me, I'm going to get a 3.5 out of 5. I'm going to get this a uh, 3.5. Mm. Next, we have something awesome. This is Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman. This match, absolutely loved it. Uh, you had Baron Corbin coming out, standing in the ring victorious as he had Heath Slater counting to 10 when Braun came out. Braun comes out and he goes, you forget this is a TLC match and there are no rules. All I need today is find people who share the same opinion as me and don't want you around. Then we cut to Apollo Crews on the outside of the ring with a chair in hand. And we keep going around. There's merit my competitors. And they all start whacking the fuck out of Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin tries to run. And then Kurt Angle comes up. And I, he gets them back into the ring and they all continuously just stomp all over Baron Corbin. And Braun Strowman comes in for the one, two, three. I, I just feel like it was, it was beautiful. They could have went the way of having Bray Wyatt fight in the match, but I feel like this was even better. I don't really like it because it was a TLC match. They could have uh, uh, introduced ladders. They could have at least put them for a table or something. But no, they, they only had chair shots. For me, this match, I'm going to get a 4 out of 5. I feel like it just worked so well. For me, I'm going to get a 2 out of 5. For me, it just didn't work. So next match that we've got is a pretty surprising match for me. Uh, it was Natalia versus Ruby Riot in a tables match. The thing that really surprised me in this is I thought it was going to be a throwaway match. I thought it was just there basically as filler and to gee like a little spotlight onto Natalia's father's passing. Yeah. But the match turned out really well. It, it, it was alright, aye. Like, for, for, for a filler match, aye. aye. You had that, sc <laughs> that scary moment with the way Liv Morgan landed through aye. the table. That was, that was a scary spot. <laughs> that was a scary spot. It was just the way she impacted the table. Both women in this match, I felt, looked absolutely incredible. No. We did see Natalia pull out a Ruby Riot table. No. And that, that was the table she ended up putting her through. That was a great moment, I. For me, I'm going to give this match a three out of five. And I'm going to get a two and a half. Just two and a half. Straight in the middle. The next match that we have is Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. This match, yes, it was really good to a certain extent. It felt like a raw match. I like that they gave the win to Finn Balor. Aye, he's, Finn Balor he's... really needed it. I'm going to give it a 2.5. Uh, it felt like a normal raw match. I'm going the same. 2.5. Shred in the middle. Now we move on to Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton in a chairs match. I actually didn't mind it. You can't expect much faith. No, Just a know. standard chairs match. But... I expected a completely brutal Randy Orton. Like, Mysterio won, but I feel like Mysterio could have got that win as long as you made Randy Orton look absolutely destructive. I mean, we did have a couple of good spots, like when Randy Orton threw the chair to at Rey Mysterio when he was going for the springboard. And when you, like, had, that, when you had that slide outside the ring with a, like, biggie board kind of thing. Aye, the and baseball Randy slide Orton with a fucking chair. That was really good. Uh, but I'm going to give this match a one star. It really, really disappointed me. I originally had this at a two, but um, 1.5 just for the finish. The finish was absolutely awful. Next up, again, another surprising match for me. It was Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax for the Raw Women's Championship. On the one hand, you have Nia Jax, who, in my opinion, looked awful. She always looks awful, Brian. But the one saving grace of this match was the fact that Ronda Rousey sold well. Ronda Rousey's moves were incredible, and Ronda Rousey managed to tell a story here with the whole staring down fucking Tamina while she was doing shit. I think she oversold, to be honest. Really? Uh, I'm going to give this match a two. Ronda, you looked really great in this match, and I'm sorry that I've been at such a low rating. 
I'm giving it such a low rating because it was Nia Jax. I just <coughs> cannot stand Nia. I am giving it a 1.5. 1.5. Just for the fact that Nia Jax was in the match. I also forgot to mention that Ronda was the winner. I don't think we had to mention it. Now we move on to the WWE Championship match. This was Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. Very good action between both of them. We didn't expect any less, no. really. Daniel Bryan really playing to the heel from the get-go. Mm. I mean, the whole sliding out of the ring and then coming back in just to slide back out straight away. Aye, uh, all the main games and... Aye, the main games were perfect in this. The ending, it's a bit iffy for me. Like, I really like everything that went on with the match and I don't mind the ending, but I feel like it could have been done better than just a simple roll-up. No, no, no. I reckon, I think that, that was actually excellent. A nice, simple, clean roll-up win for Daniel Bryan is more than you can actually ask for, really. 3.5 on this match. It was a really good match. The right person won. For me, I'm going to get a 4. 4? A 4. I just like the new Daniel Bryan. The new Daniel Bryan's great. Uh, the next match that we've got is Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. This match, I felt like it got after a very clunky start. Nah. Uh, through... It did, it did get better. But it felt very clunky at the start. I feel like they played Mare into Dean Ambrose being a bit more of a heel. Like, they had on that trash talk quite a lot. Aye. Which I did like because it plays more into... John Moxley. John Moxley, the, the side of Dean Ambrose that we want to be brought up. Uh, we need to see if they push more with this because John Moxley, that's all you have today. Gears John Moxley and we're happy. Plus you had that nice little bit of fucking Renee Young, will she turn, will she know, will uh, she turn, will she know. I, I was actually just about to get into that because that was another thing that drags down my rating here. I mean, I like the fact that you're focusing on, oh, uh, is Renee heel? Is she going to side with her husband and that? But, unfortunately, I focused on the commentary a lot more than the actual match itself, which you don't want to do. This is going to be another match where I give it two stars. Like, the, the fighting was great, but I feel like everything else kind of fell apart. I'm getting a two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Now we move on to the final match, the triple threat match. Very, very, very good match. It started out a little rusty, I think. Just slightly. Uh, but, as the match progressed, they just got better and better and better. Asuka, are you okay? <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, her leg got destroyed. And that spot where well, the leg dropped and died. Aye, the spot horrible. looked incredible. Becky Lynch climbing the ladder. Jumping down to, uh, with a leg drop to both Charlotte and Asuka, but Asuka moving out of the way. Yeah. Uh, but Asuka moved out of the way, but not far enough, because a leg got crushed under a panel for the fucking table. Yeah, that was painful. It really did. There, there was more than that. There was the kendo stick shots. There was the chair shots. Mm -hmm. Like There was the scent on for the... Table. I the sent on for the table. Oh, this looked absolutely incredible. I was on the edge of my seat for the whole fucking thing. So was that until the end. I liked the end. The match ended with Charlotte and Becky on top of the ladder with another ladder set up next to it. And Rhonda comes out. Pushes the ladder down, takes out Charlotte and Becky and allows Asuka to pick up the victory. Fair enough, it does kind of take away for Asuka's victory having that assist. Yeah. But, do you know what? Asuka's champion, so happy with that. It pushes more of a little feud between Ronda and Becky, while also pushing this, like, I've got my revenge against Charlotte. I give this match a 4.5. Like, this was my match of the night. For me, it's a 3.75. It's not as good as the Daniel Bryan AJ Styles match, but it's better than the Cruiserweight. When it comes to the chair shots... The score's on screen now. Thomas is going to look fucking terrible because he lost so many of them. Oh, don't worry, my back's already fucking killing me. <laughs> uh, but we hope you did like this video. And if you did like it, get a like. Uh, comment down below what you thought of TLC. Was it a good pay-per-view? Was it a shit pay-per-view? Let us know what you guys think.
And if you're new around here, hit, hit, hit subscribe if you want to always stay up to date on this twat's content. And your content, you're basically a fucking regular on here now. Uh, Pterodactyl Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Pterodactyl Tom. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> uh, bye. See you guys in the next one.